Um, we have how many minutes now? Ella, 24 minutes now, so we still have some time. We have so many hands up. This is yes. interesting. You look like this we have is, And we're learning from each other. Thank you, everyone that has contributed. Thank you so much. We have to learn how to, you know, resolve all these conflicts and where the conflicts are coming from. So I'm going to pick um, Ms. Shade Cole, Fakunle. Please, can you introduce yourself and where you're calling from, sir? Oh, I can't see her anymore. Are you still here? Okay, yeah. Yes, I am. Good morning. Sorry about that. I was trying to find my mute button. It's um, okay. Yes, I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. This is my very first time I was invited by Sister Ella. Oh, thank you for coming. And, yeah, thank you. And I, this is really interesting. I really love it when you know, we're talking about our children. And I don't know what has been said in the past meetings, but today I was, um, <laughs> some of my sisters are here and they're like, okay, don't go there. Anyway, so I have my own personal issues, but listening to what has been said today, especially when before Pastor Ayo spoke, I was like, thinking in my head, okay, now I got to hear balance. I got to hear balance. And then when he, he came up and he said, well, let's put a little balance here. I just love the way that he said it. Because for me personally, I have my own past. I did not want my kids to experience the pain that I went through growing up, not because my parents were bad to me, but because I made wrong, wrong choices. And when I had my kids, I, I raised them afraid. I was thinking that they were going to back me. So I was very strict. Uh, I will own to that. And in all fairness to you, that aspect of my life, I don't regret that I was very strict with my kids because I didn't feel they were strict enough with me when I was growing up. Or maybe because I was a girl and my father was very old. My mother was younger, but they didn't have that time. You know, I was left in the hands of siblings to raise. So when I started raising my own kids, I I just wanted to protect all areas. I didn't want them to get pregnant. I didn't want them to give somebody, you know, get somebody pregnant. So mm -hmm. I was very strict. And right now, as I speak to you, they're not talking to me because they're dealing with issues. Uh, my youngest is 22. My oldest is 42. And I believe that the same God that healed my mind with all the abuse that I went through as a child, not just abusing physically, you know, sexual abuse from family members, I'm healed in my brain. It's the same God. So why do I care a kid? I, I, this is my own opinion. And I, please, you can rebuke me as you want. <laughs> Why do we, you know, our generation, we know the things that we went through. Some of them were really bad. Some of them were good. They made us who we are today. And then our kids that are raised in the Western world are now beginning to detect to us how they want to be raised. And some of us are <laughs> accepting that. And what Pastor Ayo said that really touched my heart is what is going to happen when they're 50? Because they don't have this backbone. They wanted to tell us how to raise them, and we did just that. And then they grow up, and they don't know how to face the world. <laughs> I have become who I am today because of the experience that I had growing up. It helped me. It shaped me. God was not... Um, his eyes were not close to all that I went through growing up. But look at how I turned out. I haven't spoken to my four children in four years. I mean, five years. And I'm not dead. I pray for them daily. Daily. I pray for them on a daily basis. And I'm not part of I know that they're going to process to become who God has called them to be. You know, we protect them over God sometimes. We have to be this is Shadi's opinion. We have to be very careful. Let there be a balance in our raising our kids so that we don't, you know, want them to uh, identify with everybody else and become nobody. 
so that 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 is the end of my my <laughs> comments. I don't have a question. I just wanted to make a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, for being so vulnerable and sharing that. Yeah, you don't even know anyone and you shared all of that. Um, you definitely need to resolve some conflicts there. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, um, but you know, the, it's always best for somebody who doesn't know your kids to hear them out and I mean, go for some kind of therapy, help them out. They would not listen to you. That's just how we are, you know. <laughs> so I think you need some help from some someone that's good at things like this, like a, a therapist or someone who who's gone through it before that can lead you on to healing their souls. So obviously, it's going to keep. It's going to be a cycle. Somebody has to break that cycle. It's a cycle that has to be broken. Yeah, we're here, to, we're, we're, we're here yeah. to help. We're here to help you. Okay, thank you. We have to help you. Sister Asa? Sister Asa? I, I had to resort to a little bit of blackmail there, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we used to kneel down and raise up our hands? <laughs> My hand is spinning me. But good morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see your hand. I've called you now. <laughs> good morning, everyone. So, uh, very, very valuable discussion. But, you know, this has been a journey for me. But when I attended the Soul Clinic first time, you know, and that's why Dr. Sutu is saying we're here to help. Because, you know, the community has tools, the family has tools. And she said, you know, our souls have to be repaired. And I said, how? And she said, no, pray. The Holy Spirit will, will show you. Ah. This is Dr. Tutu. Oh, some of us are not like this now. <laughs> and you know, I I I was I I didn't I was born, you know, Mauritania. I don't even have like a lot of pictures, you know. Mm, yeah, I yeah. Think as so I said, okay, I'm turning 50. I want the Holy Spirit to show me from the day I was born, mm. one day every year. Show me one day. For every year, remember, I was doing that praise thing. Yeah, put that together. I saw the day I was born and myself in that incubator and the nurses that took care of me. Yeah. And I started to see myself even eating sand in my My sister is here, she will laugh. Eating, you know, I saw one day of I, I, I don't know, my childhood was completely blank, and then. You know, our family got separated between Mauritania and Nigeria. I that healed my soul. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, the healing that happened! I now had I was able to forgive, 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 forgive. Yes, yeah. forgive everyone. Yes, and then now I was not ready to start to deal with my own situation. You know, really tough situation. You're like, I did everything. We did everything good. But the children are so broken. And you're mm -hmm. like, you keep asking yourself how. But like our sister just said, I've got into a place where I am sure that I've done all that I could do. Yeah. Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that got me is going to get you. Because the promise of salvation is to me and my children for a thousand generations. Jesus Christ has already died. He, nobody <laughs> off the cross. And I just focus on the end. And I'm saying, it's part of your journey. So the other day, um, Sister Ella put something about, you know, if all the, the strong-willed children jammed mm -hmm. in, wahala, you know, and then we're going through this whole um, cast your pearls, you know, cast your pearl before swine, and then they'll come back at you. So I had to go back and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what is still inside me again? No. Because we have, it is actually us that mm -hmm. we have to you know, and say, fix me, fix me. He will fix the kids. Well, fix me, fix me. Yes. And not be in denial. Mm. And say we don't need fixing. No matter how good and all together we think we are, that first place is to fix us. Yes. Our husband is crazy. 
but it's okay. <laughs> you know. So yeah, wonderful journey. And you know, I, I've I've gotten to a place where there's no hurt, there's no pain, there's no unforgiveness, you know. And uh yeah, I think now I'm ready to yeah. see that stuff get come together. Thank you. Thank you, Asa, for sharing that. I know you shared it with me, and I was like, ah, I was. <laughs> Do you remember the day you shared this with me? We were actually riding together that day, and she I was, was like, right. I was right. Yeah, so she she said. <laughs> And and I think we should also do this too. I mean, this is, I, I like the way we're all like interacting this morning because sometimes if we don't ask, we don't get. And God sees our heart. You ask, he will show you things. He will show you the root problem of the issue so you can deal with it. The Lord doesn't want us be, to be in this state. It is the devil that is the one that is orchestrating all these things. Sometimes he asks, he will give you a vision, he'll give you a dream, or he'll bring somebody to you. Like, I mean, the way he did it for Asa was different. She had the vision. Can you imagine? God gave her a vision on when she was born and when she was a little girl. Things she didn't even know, God brought it back to her so she could heal. See what he did to me? He brought a prophet. He might not bring a prophet to you. He bring somebody to you that will just say something that will... But we have to work on ourselves first. Thank you for sharing that. We have to work on ourselves first. And like I said earlier, it's not just how we see our children. Even how we see God is affected. If we don't deal with these things, like I say, sometimes I'm in my prayer closet. One hour I didn't pray. It was just me and God, though. But I will leave that place after one. I know I didn't pray because my mind was everywhere, everywhere. Is that one prayer? Maybe I pray for one minute. But we have to get to that place where you get into that place yeah, with your child, and there's nothing between you and them, nothing between you and God, nothing between you and and it starts from us healing our soul. We, I think, we have. We have we have a series on soul repair. If you're interested, we have a school, I think it's four four classes of soul repair clinic. So even I have to go and listen to that again. Because we need to heal ourselves first before we can even heal somebody else. Right? Thank you for sharing that, Sasa. I love you. Sister, I'm not I'm not sure if it's a sister. So he I, I hope I'm saying your name right. Al Dama. Sue. I'm sorry, Sue. <laughs> Sorry, please. Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're calling from? Hey, um, hi, everybody. I'm calling from um, hi. from McKinney, Texas. Okay. Um, I nice I just you. recently moved to uh, Van Austin. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm I'm Mexican. I'm Hispanic, and so I think I relate with you guys a lot because. Um, I know that you guys are from Nigeria and I think we were raised the same, you know, our, my parents were very tough. Um, I come from a divorced parents. I am divorced. I'm a single parent also as well. I have a 16 year old daughter and an eight year old son. And, um, um, the way that I was raised was very, you know, was tough. My mom didn't give me anything for free. I had to work for everything that I had. Um, I started working when I was 14 and actually in Mexico, that was my first job. I was, you know, I was, I'm a U.S. citizen, but, you know, I was born here in, in, in the United States and they took me back to Mexico and I went to school over there in Mexico. And I, I never remember of, you know, of complaining about it. I just went through it. You know, I respected my parents a lot and I didn't question them why they did that to me, you know. Um, then they divorced. Um, you know, I had to work for um, to to help my mom with diapers and milk for my brothers. I raised my two brothers mm -hmm. while she was at work. I I I um, I was helping my mom without a question. Then um, then now I'm a single parent um, and and I have a 16 year old daughter that I love truly. She last year we went through court because I was fighting, I've been fighting custody over my kids because the dad has, um, he wants to supposedly have them, but he never shows up. He never um, does. I, he's just trying to retract with, with from child support. Hmm. And um, as of last year, I'm not gonna, you know, I have spent a lot of money on, on, on lawyers and stuff because um, me and her had a little argument that I did spank her last year because she mm -hmm. met a boy online. 
And, you know, and she did something that I didn't like. So I did spank her. So she called her dad. Her dad came and picked her up. And then he he started a a um, a, a lawsuit against me. And now, you know, so then that happened two years ago. Now, last year, she came back home. She said that she really missed me, that, you know, that she that she wanted to come back home. I did that. You know, I was like, you know, I, I welcomed her back to my house and everything and, and try to raise her the, the right way. You know, she got a job. She her grades were OK. They were not like um, they were not like perfect, but. You know, but through that year, I, I started noticing that she that she she had changed a lot. She she slacked on on like not cleaning the house. So every day I was like, Kimberly, did you pick up your room? Did you did this? Did you did that? And so she it was like she was she was dragging me also as well. Um, now she met another boy um, over two weeks, two months ago. And then she told me, she said, you know, mom, I just want to tell you, you know, I met another boy, and uh, 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 this boy, I don't want to go through the same thing that we went last time. So I'm going to tell you. So then I opened my heart again. I'm like, look, you know, if he, if the boy comes to the house and I can say hi to him and see who he is, then we'll try to arrange, you know, like if you, if you guys can be friends and stuff like that. And she didn't, she, she started talking to them on the phone at two in the morning, you know, and so it was like a daily argument, like, you know, we can't, you know, so then, so then I said, you know, last, last week, she, she called her dad again, she called her dad again, and she said that she didn't want to live with me anymore. Yeah. She broke my heart again, she broke my heart. And, um, I, you know, she broke my heart again. But, you know, I think now I'm stronger because it happened to me last year and, and not as bad. But now I know, you know, that I can't let her I can't let her manipulate me because she's dragging me in her mess. So then as I, yesterday, she, um, her dad came and picked her up again and she's moving all her stuff out. And then I'm like, you know what? Leave. Leave with him. You know, he's going to, you know, if you think that he's a better parent, that's fine. You know, I need to, um, you know, because I feel like I have lost myself also as well. Like what I have mm -hmm. I done wrong? What am I doing wrong? I still have a year, year, eight year old son that I love truly. I mean, I see that he has a different heart that she does, you know, but this is not the girl that I raised. Like it's a completely different person. Like. I'm like, she, she, when I asked her to pray with me, she doesn't want to pray with me. She got baptized when she, she came back to, uh, back to my house. She, um, she got baptized. She, you know, she just wrapped me around her, her finger mm -hmm. again, you know? And now she's like, no, I don't believe in God. No, she doesn't say that she doesn't believe in God. She's like, I don't, I don't want to pray anymore. You know, I don't, you know, so then yesterday she was telling her dad all these lies that I always scream at her and that I am always like, you know, yelling at her that that the race, the way that I raised her, that she's she's traumatized because she was telling me she was telling my ex-husband that supposedly that I had her on the floor right. at four Sorry. years old. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me interject because we are live. Um, okay. should, and, and when, not to stop what you're saying, but just to protect her as well. Okay, we're mm -hmm. live on Facebook. Um, oh, so <laughs> there. it's fine. I know you did not know, but I don't know if Pastor, I think we kind of get a picture of what you're saying. If, um, mm -hmm. and I totally understand your story because I, I have a bit of experience with that. But, um, Pastor Tutu, if anyone wants to jump in, I do have something to say to her, but. Um, anyone wants to jump in and I interjected because we're on Facebook just to protect um, the people involved. Yeah. Say what you have to say. Um, I also think, and so, you know, we, we pass because I know you as well. Everything you're going through, we really, really, I want to say, first of all, we're praying for you and it's a mm -hmm. hard place to be. It's a very, very yeah. hard place to be. The yeah. way and all of that it's a hard place. especially want... since i was not brought up like that i mean to this moment i i mm -hmm. i will never do that to my mom 
<laughs> you know, and, and and she, I got beatings too. I mean, she's she slapped me in the face for things that I didn't do right or things that I, and you know how she, uh, you know that that made me stronger. Uh, that that made me as a strong person. At the moment, I didn't see. I mean, I was complaining also to, you know, why am I treat, getting treated like this? But at the end now I'm like, man, if my parents never took me back to Mexico, you know, probably I didn't, I, I don't, I didn't value life how I value it now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you do your best. The, the truth is when, um, like the word, one of the key words we've been saying in the room is as we are doing our soul work. Anytime the parents are not united, there's a divorce. There's been a lot of chaos. She's going to pray on that. And it's not because she's a bad kid. She wants to hurt you or she wants to put you in this process or break your heart. Like you said, there's, the foundation is already shaky. The foundation is faulty, right? And so everything you're seeing is a symptom of a broken foundation. So most of the time we're stuck fixing their behavior, but the behavior is connected to something. There's anger, right? And of course, anger is rooted in fear, frustration, hurt, injustice. So that's the reaction she's given to you. And she would pray on mom or dad, if things doesn't go well here, I'm gonna go to where I can get my way. And, and of course, she's looking for the 2 a.m. being on the phone, the boyfriend, of course, is coming back to where can I find love, significance? Where can I find security? And if she's not finding that at home, she would look elsewhere. So again, this is not a therapy session and, and we're gonna break it down. And we'll come back to you if you need, you know, you can always reach me or mama, or, you know, you can always reach us. But the key thing I wanna say here, just for the benefit of everyone here, the more we're doing our work, right? As you're doing your work of healing, because again, in a multitude of, of words, your words, you can tell there's still a lot of hurt there. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, you're going to go through the process, but the more you do your work of forgiveness, forgiving your mom, they did the best they knew to do. Now it's for you to reset a structure and foundation based on your own healing. That as you heal, your daughter will come back to you. It's just a matter of time. Right now she's praying mm -hmm. on the chaos. She's taking advantage of all the chaos there. So we need to come back to your own healing because I've been there. I, I have been mm -hmm. where you are. You know, I may not have spanked one and all of that, but I've been there. The kids, now it's you and her. She wants to go to her dad. She will come back. Don't worry about her betraying you and all of that. The more you're doing your work, your healing, your work of healing and letting go, forgiving your husband, forgiving your parents, then and asking God to help you. There's something that the world is teaching us right now. Um, um, conscious parenting. I love it. I like it. I'm not against it. So if you're a therapist here, you don't need to correct me on that. I, I'm totally all for that. But in looking into conscious parenting, the Holy Spirit does the work. That's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Conscious brain is a form of parenting where they tell you, like, look at things, the child's feeling, how to feel their reaction, how to get into their world. But you can't really see anybody until you see God. You can't really see my pain until you own your own pain. Because naturally, we're full of biases. We're judgmental. We're critical. And we're going to project that. We can't give what we have not received. Mm -hmm. And so when we're seeing chaos, unless you receive, and then you can pour it down. And when we begin to see each other as we're image bearers, we're not, we're not our flaws, we're not our mistakes, we're not our accomplishments, we're mm -hmm. not, they, they belong to God. Our children belong to God. I, I have had to, like we're talking about soul work, till this day, I'm still doing my work. I've mm -hmm. had to go through a season of, um, I watched a documentary, that's where I started from. I'm not, I don't do documentary, but on that day, here was the documentary. And they had all these socioeconomic issues, poverty. They had it all laid out. And I stood there because I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to sit down and just listen. And when they got to single motherhood and, and the rate of poverty and, and what class, you know, the, uh, uh, single parents and gang rape and how our sons will be uh, um, street, street boys and, and be, being gangs and how the daughters would have father wounds and mommy wounds. They said all these things. And I was so broken. And I said, whoa, is this what's going to happen to me? And the Holy Spirit said right there, where is it in my word? 
Where is it in my word? If statistics, now we're not against statistics. The statistics may be right. The numbers may be growing, right? But as we go to the Holy Spirit, help us to do the work. Because he's yeah. where the cross, the sign of the cross, right? When somebody is displaced, there's nothing missing, nothing broken with God. I've had to be here and say, okay, well, listen, you have to amplify my voice. You, they say, oh, the, the boys, they need a male figure. They need the, the tone, the, 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 fle- the inflections and all of that. Okay, I'm not going to talk like a man. I don't want to be the male figure, but you speak, <laughs> you speak through me to them, yeah. right? And so if we break out of those limitations that we place on ourselves, um, there's no fathers. Our children are going to be, uh, 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 they're going to be raped, molested, and incarcerated. Where's that in the world? That has been a push for me to say, okay, let me do my work. And every day, our children give off, your daughter is giving you a gift, Sue. She's giving you a gift. I have two questions that I was going to just throw in. What is your child teaching you? Right. And what is your child revealing to you about you? Because they continue to give us gifts to go back and look within ourselves.